We're making fried chicken and it's really yummy. It comes from the south, but you know it's yummy everywhere because we are cooking it good. I'm not from the south. I'm from Fort Erie. But that's okay because you know what? Fried chicken is the universal way to show love. I'm Maddie Matheson. This is how you're going to make fried chicken. Fried chicken is super, super easy to make, guys. This was an easy, nice thing. Don't ruin this. We got some chickens here. We got some beautiful chickens. We got some pickle brine, because we're gonna be making some pickle brine fried chicken. We're gonna butcher the chickens, put them into the pickle brine, put them in the buttermilk, put them in our flour, put a little seasoning in them, boom, into the fryer. We're gonna be doing it in the old big old pot here. So let's check out how we do the chickens. You take your chicken, you make an incision here. Oh, take it, you cut the skin there. Oh, and you just follow around. See that, opens up, very nice. There we go, we got the chicken, we got the thigh. Boom, one piece, two piece. Cut through the little wedge there, little bone. Take it here. You cut down into the crease of the thigh and the leg, no sweat, boom. We're just gonna cut down here, cut down here. That's the spine of a chicken. Cause you don't want this, there's like no meat on it. Look at that beauty. Oh boy, got away from me, didn't it? A little salmonella for everyone. Cut through the little wedge there, little bone. And now we got this. I like to put a little bit of breast meat on it and make it more than just a wing. So you just cut that through the breast plate. So you want all your pieces of fried chicken to be the same size. So you get eight, nine, 10 pieces of fried chicken out of each bird. So we'll do that again. So here we go. We got the 20 piece dinner right here. We got the legs, thighs, breasts, wings. We are gonna do a pickle brine. So take your favorite pickles, pour that into a large pot, throw all your chicken in here. So one of the oldest stories of all time and space is the pickle brine story. An old man out on the mountains, he had a chicken and he used to love eating pickles. And you know what? Those pickles ran out one day and he had some chicken and he had some pickle brine left. And he was like, I'm gonna fry up this chicken, but you know what? Sometimes it's dry. Maybe if I put in this salty, acidic juice, it'll come alive. And you know what happened? A delicious invention of culinary worlds. And that's the old pickle brine story. People have been frying their chickens and using pickle brines for many, many, many generations. Put this in the fridge for about 24 hours, up to three days. So it's been 24 hours, and now I've just taken the pot of chicken out of the fridge. Oh, look at that. See that juicy chicken? That's beautiful. Smell it? <sighs> Smells like pickle and chicken. Now we can take the chicken out of the pickle brine, and then we're gonna put it in the buttermilk. So just gently make sure it's all submerged. Gonna have to power wash this entire kitchen after this, make sure no one dies. Cause you know what? Everyone dies if you eat undercooked chicken. That's a fact. Good thing we know that, don't we guys? That's a new rule. We're gonna put in the buttermilk for at least four hours. Let that chill out, beautiful. And now we gotta wait. We just waited 24 hours. Now we gotta wait another four hours. Take your time, be patient. And at the end of the day, you're gonna have beautiful fried chicken. And now we're gonna season the flour. For 20 pieces of chicken, I got I don't know, like six cups of flour here. If you wanna put some seasonings, I do. We got some smoked paprika, mace, ground coriander, whole fennel seed, cayenne, paprika, ground clove, and poultry seasoning. About a tablespoon of each spice and about four tablespoons of cayenne. I like it spicy about four or five tablespoons of salt, and then a bunch of fresh cracked pepper. And there you go, you got flour. Nice and easy. Four hours have gone by. 
miraculously. And now we're gonna take the chicken out and we're gonna put it in the old fucking flour. Oh, see that how the buttermilk stuck to it? It's beautiful. So right now I'm just tossing the chicken all in the flour. You wanna get all the grooves in there. You want it to be all nice and yummy. And then just sprinkle off the dusters, whatever's left. And just, if you see any wet marks or anything that's kinda, you know, luby, just give it some uh, extra love. Look at that piece of chicken. See all this? Oh, this looks like something from like underneath the sea. Underneath the sea. Oh, I got chicken juice everywhere. It's quite a kerfuffle. And then we're gonna fry this bad boy up. So now we're gonna put the canola oil in the pot. So when you're deep frying at home, if you don't have a deep fryer, make sure you're doing it in a heavy duty enamel pot cast iron. Make sure you have it less than half because it's fucking boil over and smash your skin. You know, you don't want that. This is for real, guys. You're dealing with hot oil. This is not a joke. Making fried chicken is very dangerous. Hot oil is very dangerous. If you guys want to die, that's on you. You want fried chicken suicide, you go ahead. So I don't want you to burn yourself. And then the big secret is you get your oil to 300, and at 300 degrees, you're gonna get golden fried chicken and cooked fried chicken. Crank your stove and you maintain that 300 degree. So you can just take it, look, oh. Put it in one piece at a time. This is a lengthy process because it's gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes to cook the chicken. You wanna take your chicken out before it's fully cooked because that cooking time, once you take it out of the deep fryer, the heat is gonna keep cooking that chicken meat. Because you know what? Food keeps cooking until it's cold. You don't realize that. So you just want to gently move it around so it's not getting stuck on the bottom. So it's ready because I took the thermostat and it's at 165, which is perfect. Okay, so you just season it. When it comes out of the fryer, nice and hot, salt, stick to it so then just make a little platter so we'll serve it with maybe a few wedges of lemon look at this you go buy two chickens from the local butcher shop don't get any of that shitty ass chicken go home and you deep fry it and you share it with the buds so i got some buddies here and i'm gonna go sit down and enjoy this fried chicken man Woo! there you go guys some fried chicken amazing when I make fried chicken, I like to share it with people that I like a lot. <laughs> this is Avi. Avi? Avi? We got Sam James, the man who invented the coffee bean. Adrian. First. He's, he's friends with a bunch of dudes in OVO. So let me tell you a secret. <laughs> you surround yourself by successful people, you yourself will become successful. Let's eat some chicken. Let's get it. Hey. Let's get it. Hey. hey. Drummy. Drummy. A little lemon wedge, mm -hmm. a little pickle, a little bread. That's all you need with chicken. How you got it so crispy? That's good, right? It's good. Um, this is damn so good chicken, good. man. Where's your first time having fried chicken? I remember the first time seeing a bucket of chicken. I remember our neighbors. Our neighbor's dad came home with a bucket of chicken. We want. I wanted chicken so bad. Uh, oh my god! I can't believe that guy has a bucket of chicken. You're like the dog in the yard, like. Oh my god! Bucket. We eat fried chicken all day because we kings. See this table, kings. We're making decisions. Chicken gang. Chicken gang. <laughs> <laughs>